Backgammon is one of the oldest board games in the world, dating back to 3000 BC. It is played with a pair of dice, which may be the reason why it is generally considered to be more game of a chance than skill. I had the same misconception before I learned to play backgammon during my undergrad years. I had seen people playing it and thought that it looks like a fun dice game. In this video, I will explain step by step some game theoretical aspects of backgammon to help promote it among the strategy game enthusiasts as well as the wider public. Here is a game tree representation of a backgammon position, where you roll a pair of dice. The outcome of the dice could be anything from double one to double six. And depending on the outcome, you make a move, which is represented by a green circle over here. The full game is too complicated to show here, but suppose that you rolled one two and played your move represented by an edge emanating from the green circle over here. Then I roll the dice and depending on its outcome, I make a move and so on, which is represented by a red circle. We continue taking turns until the game ends. Following white arrows from the beginning to the end leads to a unique backgammon game. There are more unique games in backgammon than we could ever imagine, far more than the number of atoms in the known universe. Here's another part of the game tree and a unique game. From game theoretical perspective, backgammon is a game of perfect information just like chess and go. Perfect information means that at any point in the game, players have the same information about what has happened in the game, so no player possesses more information than the other. Indeed, backgammon includes chance moves but both players know the outcome of the dice before making a move. An example of a game of imperfect information is poker. You know your hand, but you don't know the hand of the other players, hence the imperfect information. Mathematician von Neumann proved in 1928 that every two-person zero-sum game has an optimal solution. His famous Minimax theorem can be applied to backgammon as well. Without getting into technical details, in backgammon, there is always a perfectly optimal solution in pure strategies. In other words, there is always a correct way to play backgammon whenever a player is to move. One important insight in strategic games is that having an element of chance does not make it easier to find the optimal solution in games. It can actually make it more complicated. Spoken words fly away, so let me give you a concrete example. This game tree illustrates the so-called coin gammon game, which is perhaps the simplest abstract game that mimics backgammon. First, you flip a coin and observe the outcome, which could be heads or tails, and then choose left or right. After that, I flip a coin, observe the outcome, and choose left or right. The number in the first row gives your score and the number in the second row gives my score. Coin gammon involves chance, but if you, as player 1, play the game perfectly, you can win at least 75% of the time against me, player 2. It all depends on your strategy. Let's find the optimal solution via the so-called backward induction. First, we check what would I choose here. No matter what I choose, you win the game 1-0. So, both choices are equally good for me or equally bad. Similarly, you win in both cases over here. Notice that in these following two nodes, you lose the game irrespective of what I choose. Therefore, moving backwards, at this node, you would choose left with probability 1, which guarantees a win for you. Okay, so if it comes up heads, you know what to play. Next, at this node, my choice actually matters, and I would choose left to win the game. And here, I would choose right. 
in any case you lose in this part of the tree over here I would choose right whereas here you win in either case anticipating my choice your best strategy at this node is to choose right with probability 1 because with positive probability you may win the game whereas if you choose left you'll always lose so if you make the optimal moves as we have just calculated the only case you may lose is when the sequence of play is tails right heads and right as shown by the white arrows starting from the beginning to the end your losing probability is then equal to the multiplication of the probabilities along the losing path which is 25 percent in other words if you play optimally your winning probability is 75 percent however if you play randomly then you can win under two cases here and there so your overall winning probability would be only 37.5 percent put differently you can basically double your winning chances by playing correctly that is exactly how backgammon works if you find the correct move you may even be able to triple and quadruple your winning chances are we finished not yet a backgammon competition between two players consists of several games which is somewhat similar to volleyball and tennis as an example let's focus on a two point or best of three match in which the first player who wins two points wins the competition going back to coin gammon the ways in which you can win a two point match is given in the table you can win the first two games in a row which has the probability 0.75 squared or you can win the first game lose the second game and win the last game which happens with probability 0.14 alternatively you may lose the first game but win the next two games which has also the probability 0.14 in total your winning probability has increased to slightly above 84 percent in the two-point match however if you play each game randomly your winning probability decreases to below 32 percent this graph shows your probability of winning the match for three initial values on the x-axis we have the length of the competition from one point to 19 point which corresponds to the length of the matches in the world backgammon championship many backgammon competitions are organized into nine point or eleven point matches if you play optimally shown by the green line your probability of winning the match increases from 75 percent to above 99 percent in the 11 point match and above 99.9 percent in the 19 point match on the other hand if you play randomly your probability of winning a single game is 37.5 percent as we have calculated your probability of winning the match as shown by the blue line decreases significantly to six percent in the 19 point match obviously humans are not perfect nor do they play completely randomly suppose that with hard work you can increase your probability of winning a game to about 60 percent shown by the orange line then your probability of winning the match would increase to above 80 percent in the nine point match and to almost 90 percent in the 19 point match this example shows that choosing the optimal or near optimal moves and gaining a relatively small advantage in a single game can make you a huge favorite in the match in my next video i will talk about the similarities and the differences between chess and backgammon